welcome to the Abarth 500. Now, the eagle-eyed viewers amongst you may have spotted that the Abarth is based on the quirky and different Fiat 500, which uh, I'm actually a big fan of. I've done a review of that car and it'll be linked at the end of this video. So I'm super excited to get behind the wheel of the car that was part of the relaunch of the Abarth brand. The Abarth name has an illustrious history starting in 1949. It was originally a racing outfit run by a man called Carlo Abarth. The association with Fiat began uh, shortly after, in 1952, when uh, Carlo got a hold of some Fiat running gear for his uh, new racing car. But it wasn't until 1972 that they, that they officially became part of Fiat. From that point, they were basically building rally cars for Fiat, and they were quite a serious uh, racing outfit. Slightly more boring days of Bath came along, the 90s and 2000s, where it basically just became like a sporty trim level on some of the Fiat models. It wasn't until 2007 that uh, they essentially rebirthed a Bath as its own brand. So the fact this car's based on the Fiat 500, that is no bad thing, because it's, it's the same sort of car to, to drive. You know, the gear sticks up, here, up high in a nice position. The car is small and sort of wraps around you. It's got that wonderful interior, the, the same wonderful interior as the 500, which is really different to anything else on the roads, apart from the other two million Fiat 500s that they sold. So what sets it apart from the Fiat 500? Well, immediately, you, if you just look at it from the outside, it's covered in decals and, and stickers and, and sporty bits of trim and so on. Then when you fire the engine up, this nice rasp from the exhaust and the, uh, the 1.4 litre turbo engine. Underneath, they've uh, completely replaced the suspension, so you've got different uh, shocks and springs. The whole car's just designed to be, obviously, sportier, quicker, more exciting than the regular 500. It does feel like a different car in many ways. This particular car is uh, 2009, and it's actually one of the very first Abarths that they built. I believe it's in the first one or two hundred cars. And secondly, it's only done 11,000 miles, so it's basically a museum piece. Big thanks to Tony Blount for bringing this car to the channel. The first thing to note is that the ride is, as you'd expect, a bit firmer. Now, when I say a bit firmer, it's quite a lot firmer. It really doesn't like those narrow speed bumps, the ones that you're meant to straddle. If you can, try and go through the middle between them because it sends you flying out your seat when you go over them. Poor little car. They should get rid of those bloody things. This car's got the contrasting white body-coloured panel across the, the middle, which looks metal, but it's plastic. And these red leather seats, which are wonderful. They are quite firm seats, but they're, they're not bad to look at and they hold you in. I think they're designed for the slim Italian who has a small croissant and an espresso for breakfast. The rest of the basic design of this cabin is very, very sort of simple, easy to use. You've only got a few buttons for the climate control and then you've got your radio up here. No big screen or anything, none of that crap. Then you've got the dials in front of you, which is the same as the Fiat 500. It's got the little screen in the middle with your fuel and your temperature and then concentric circles around it with the RPM and uh, speed. I really like how they just managed to fit all that into one small space. The 1.4 litre turbo fire engine, it's got 130 horsepower, but this car weighs just one, just over one ton, so it's a very light car, very small car. A reasonable amount of power for a car like this, and not 60 in 7.6 seconds, so it's certainly no slouch. And the engine sounds fantastic for a four cylinder. It's uh, it's wonderful. Wow, sport mode kind of does transform the car. I mean, it's not just a, it doesn't feel like a gimmick. The steering weights up, it's got electric power steering so they can vary the, uh, the weight of it. It feels like you're really like driving some old school car with heavy steering in a good way. The throttle seems more sensitive to me as well. So like, yeah, it definitely uh, changes the character of the car somewhat. Now that firm ride is always there. It's amazing what 135 horsepower will do in a car when it only weighs a ton. It feels nippy. In sport mode, it really does feel quick. Um, it's a small car and it's wrapped all around you. It's a fun car to drive, yeah. Just like these, the standard Fiat 500 is quite enjoyable. This is basically just the 500 on steroids. This is why you have that hard suspension. The way the power's delivered, oh, it's linear power. You don't get that like turbo lag so it's a, it's a turbo engine, but you can't feel the, uh, the turbo. This car's got Pirelli P0s on it, and they are grippy AF. The other joy is that if you are blasting up a country lane, if you come around a corner and there's someone there, you can just nip round them. You're not driving some big wide car. So it, it really is perfectly set up for sort of your B-road fun country lane blast. If you're enjoying this video, 
don't forget to press that little button that looks like a thumb and it's the one pointing upwards yeah that's the one yeah cheers up on top of the dash here there's a, uh, a big turbo boost gauge sticking out and uh, the shift indicator in the middle it kind of tells you to shift up uh, in a sort of economical way i was thinking oh, that's no good you want it to be like telling you to shift when you're near the red line or something but of course when you put your foot down it lights up then when you get towards the top end of the engine but if 135 horsepower is not enough when this car was new you could have the ss kit applied to it or as it should be pronounced sasa and now that provided another 30 horsepower up to 160 remapped the ecu and uh, changed the air filter to give you a bit more power and it was under warranty at the time and stuff so you can be rest assured that the engine's going to cope with it and it's fine if you want and you don't have the ss version then you actually can get the ecu remapped up to 160 anyway from 2016 this car sort of transformed into what's known as the 595 and the uh, 695 they obviously facelifted the whole fiat 500 range and including this car with the 595 and the 695 they added a little bit more power that's another way of getting into a, a quicker abarth 5 500. the abarth logo is a uh, scorpion on a shield of red and yellow and it looks really cool what i uh, didn't realize until recently was that this, the scorpion was uh, put there because Mr. Carlo Abarth was a Scorpio. What I like about that is that I'm also a Scorpio. It means that me and him have obviously led very similar lives because that's how astrology works. We all end up doing the same thing based on when we were born, apparently. Equipment-wise, it's uh, pretty well equipped for a small car of its day. You get air conditioning as standard, which is perfect on a day like this. I'd be uh, roasting in here if I didn't have that. And it's got electric windows and electric mirrors. And Baxi JJ, what do you think of the back? Yeah, it's... Uh it's quite cosy back here, um, my head's kind of just about touching the, the roof, I have to kind of lean forward a bit, my knees are around the side of the seat, but for a very short journey it'll be alright, and for kids you, you know, it's okay. So it's only got a small fuel tank, 35 litres, and officially it'll get about 40 miles per gallon, so uh, you're going to be filling up fairly often if you're doing long distance. Whether you manage to get 40 mpg or not, that will depend on how you drive, I, I suspect that you probably won't. If you're driving this car how it's meant to be driven once you're on the motorway there's a bit of a fair bit of wind and road noise but the gearing's not too bad it's not revving too high when you're at 70 miles an hour or anything the ride kind of smooths out and then of course you've got the the torque even now at sort of lower speeds when you put your foot down in fifth it'll you can gun it round people and make safe overtakes and stuff once you're on the move now even with the out sport mode uh, engaged the steering is definitely uh, weightier once you're moving it's noticeably different so when you're in town it's like super light and really easy once you're on the motorway it's not like all jittery and light it's firmed up in it and it's uh, easy to keep the car straight and true so uh, a quick look around the cabin practicality um, there's nowhere for this bottle to fit really the cup holders are quite small so the fat bottom bottle doesn't fit anywhere even in the door pockets unless you sort of dump it in upside down there's no glove box as with the standard fiat 500 it's just a sort of gilt glove gap there's no lid the boot by the way is exactly the same size as the fiat 500 there's no difference they've not used up any space doing anything with it it's quite small but you know it's all right for this size of this car and you can fold the seats down flat but only if the, the the original buyer opted for that if you're worried about safety in a small car like this well they're about as safe as they could get for its day so it was a five-star euro cap and it's got seven airbags including one for the driver's knee as well would i recommend the abarth 500 and the answer is yes for certain situations if this is going to be your only car and you're driving it around town every day and you've got to go to the shops and i think that the hard hard ride at least for me would start to get on my nerves but when you get to the right road if you're buying a weekend car or you're using it to sort of commute down some twisty b roads to work and you're on the motorway that's okay on the motorway it really is a fun enjoyable car and it's so different to anything else that's why i would say i'd leave it up to you to make that decision but uh, i do like this car if you're interested in finding out about the fiat 500 just the the, the bog standard twin air type car then uh, click up here because uh, i've already done a review of that car it might give you a little bit more insight even into this one um, i'm sure there'll be some things that i've missed so thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video